you're successful in your sport. You're an Olympian, world champion. Um, you're also successful off the track with your marketing and your media that you get, your sponsorship. How do you do it all? Um, it's very busy and it's something that progressed from a young age. I definitely didn't just go from doing nothing to do all, doing all the media and being media savvy and everything all at once. It was definitely a progression that was helped from my parents and they're both in marketing and they kind of helped lead me in the direction um, that I needed to go and started out with baby footsteps. I'd start doing some things and it would seem a bit overwhelming and then I would adapt to that and then that sort of became second nature and then would be able to add in more things that I could then start doing. So that leads to my next question which was how did you get started? So having a couple of parents that work in marketing must have really helped you a lot. Yeah it definitely did as well as that um, I'm a bit of a creative person myself and that definitely helped that I sort of taught myself able to do Photoshop and create my own race reports and my dad also does computers so at the same time he helped sort of get my website started and then from then taught me how to run it and progress from there and yeah it was really I was guided a lot in the beginning which is definitely what you need um, but then I was able to sort of make it my own. Mm -hmm. So give us a bit of a breakdown of what tools you use. So you mentioned a website, what else have you got going on? Um, I have a website, then there's all the social media with Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and those things as well. But then also after every race, I put out a race report. So that's basically goes to all my sponsors, all the media, you know, any support network or any sort of connection I have. I've just created a big mailing list and it goes out and it's uh, an easy way after every race. I put it in and um, it's basically Word, so there's text and then there's also... Um, just all of the photos from the race all put together in a collage with uh, this, my sponsor's banner at the bottom. So that's just good for, you know, as soon as I'm finished a race, if my sponsors want quick sort of a grab for the news edit or whatever else is coming out, they can grab the text or grab a photo or put the whole thing on their website or do whatever they want with it. So it's a little bit easier and um, I found that there's been great response from doing that. And do you feel that doing this has you know, enabled you to get more sponsorship? Definitely, because uh, like sponsors, they also want return. It's not just what they can give me or how much product they can give me or whatever. It's also what I can do with them. So not just on the track and not just displaying their logos, but also being able to have these reports and being able to give back. And for them, Dave, we would have lots of easy content on me. Um, I tend to try to make that, that job easy for them to make them have more than they need and then definitely mm -hmm. gets used then. And how much of the content that you create is driven by you and how much by the sponsors uh, or by what the media wants? Do you, do you just give them what you want to do or is there a bit of give and take? It still kind of like blows my mind a bit. Like a lot of people think that I have a lot of help and I don't do it myself. So I don't know if I need to write on all my things, you know, like <laughs> produced by Caroline. But no, like it is, um, a lot of it is driven by me. Like I was guided at the beginning, but now it's, uh, yeah, I guess it's like, quite a bit of production when you put it all together and but doing it sort of in slow steps now it's just second age it's not really too hard to for me to be able to do any of it. Mm. So you've you know you've taken on this yourself as you say and how important is it for you personally to take that kind of control for your success? Well it's extra important in BMX and also mountain biking both being male dominated sports I've definitely got to work harder than everyone else and especially the males to not just only be able to get the recognition but just be able to get that support from sponsors so if I can have a different angle to me that's not just Carolyn Buchanan racer but you know Carolyn Buchanan the whole package then that just I guess is a whole nother selling point for sponsors and people to be able to market me and in the beginning it felt like uh, it was a lot of work for not much return but now slowly you know the ball's rolling and I'm starting to notice all the effort that I've put in years ago with my profile and things like that is starting to pay off for sure. So give us an example of you know a typical day in terms of promoting yourself or a typical week um, you know what exactly are we, are we doing here? Yeah well social media is constant you know everyone wants it the now and what you're doing and everything from day to day till I'll put out if it's the beginning of the year I find the end of year beginning of the year is just really stressful it's kind of like especially this year with new sponsors and everything so it was new press releases new sponsors new kind of everything that was going out and um, new content sort of new image new everything so it was a whole kind of revamp of everything including my website and all of that so 
those times are definitely a lot more stressful. It seems like every day it's just one thing after another. But the general week is not too bad. It's just social media that sort of updates every day and things like that. And then um, also with some of my sponsors, like my headphone company, Monster Headphones, we'll do sort of every three months we'll do a giveaway on Facebook and yeah, you know, just things like that. That's it's funny to think that a lot, of, quite a lot of my sponsors now, a lot of it is aimed around social media and marketing. It's just. You know, they're not too interested in what I do on the bike, some of them. They just love that, you know, there's that side of it and they can market there. So, um, yeah, besides that, the website gets updated after every race or any major thing that I do or news grab that comes out. And uh, then the race report, which is after every race as well, which also goes out and gets updated. So, yep. Do you have a sort of system or a timetable? Um, I mean, how do you not just spend all your time on social media? Yeah, it's hard. Um, you know, I got to a stage where it would get hard to sort of wind down and go to sleep. But no, it's. Um, I found up until four o'clock in the afternoon, I don't really post too much after then because I want to sort of hit the market of not just getting Australia but also I race a lot in the US and also a lot of Europe as well so if I can do it kind of by four o'clock then that'll hit all the markets together and I'm not sort of posting at the wrong time so that's one little thing that I learnt but I gen generally manage to switch off pretty well. Yep, excellent. So you've, you've purposely picked times to post that you know you're going to get the most audience. Yeah, definitely. And um, if you were talking to other athletes right now who are listening to this and going, oh my God, that sounds like so much work. Um, what would you say to them to perhaps encourage them to do um, at least a little bit of something? Oh, it's so important. Just like talking to another girl in BMX who's an up and coming girl and she's a little star already and she's, you know, she's trying to do exactly what I'm doing now, but she's six years younger than me. And I'm kind of just saying, you know, like take the baby steps, like do what I did. I had a little bit of mentoring from um, a guy in Melbourne and that, that was really what helped me as well. So I'd uh, do the little bits and then I'd get overwhelmed and then it would become second nature and I could, you know, walk in the park and I'd be able to do that and then um, progress. So I think take baby steps, do all the little things and even though you might not see the rewards straight away, it's definitely you get the rewards in the future. Yeah, and if you were to suggest one thing to start with at first, what would that be? Um, social media, I think, is quite big for sure, and that's a really powerful tool. Um, a website was one of my first things that I did, but I find now like I'll get more hits on social media than I'll get on my website, so yeah. just kind of how the times are changing. Yeah. Um, so I'd say probably just, yeah, to start with social media, but the biggest thing for me and what people love is, is those race reports and getting that content back to my sponsors so that they know what I'm doing and what's going on and then they can then have content to post as well. In terms of uh, getting sponsorship, for example, um, do you find that people tend to come to you or do you actively seek them? No, definitely. You've got to be active and um, very proactive about it. So luckily I've, I've also, leading into the 2012 Olympics, I got a manager, so he's based in Sydney, Robert Josky, and he's definitely helped on that corporate level to get sponsors like Mitsubishi and sort of now Subaru. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely a big help to have a manager like him on board. But so much of it is time management and learning that time management because a lot of that comes just from picking it up along the way. Mm, yeah, time management is one that comes up a lot with athletes. Um, do you have any tricks or advice uh, that you can give to other athletes? I'm big on my, my notes, I guess, and writing down like a to-do list and then putting that to-do list in priorities and making sure that the priorities are getting done. And I generally will have, you know, a couple of top priorities for each day. And if I don't get the rest of my to-do list done, then I've just learned not to stress about it and that emails can wait and people can wait. And um, I'm pretty, you know, good about getting back to people on time, but, you know, that's not always the ideal world. So I've learned that people can wait sometimes. <laughs> Excellent, that's very good advice. Um, Canberra specifically, I mean, you're from Canberra. Um, you get a lot of support from, uh, support, sorry, from the Canberra Times. Uh, they're quite good with supporting women in sport. Um, you know, do you have a special relationship with the, the media in Canberra? Yeah, they're, um, especially too, because Canberra's such a small country town, it feels like. There, there has been sort of some key people that I've been out of work with over the years and have been really loyal to me and know my whole story from kind of start to finish so that's definitely one as well that to have a relationship with the media and people you trust and people that are going to write about you how you want the story to come out as well and that's definitely been a huge thing for me. Yeah you talked about your mailing list that you have how did you did that just build up gradually or did you actively call up papers and different people to kind of get their names on there or um, how did that go about? In the beginning it was like you know a little bit of push any time I was emailing someone I just 
yeah, do you want to be on my mailing list? And started it that way and then it just grew really. People would then email me and say, oh, at the same time, can you, you know, put someone else's mailing uh, address on the list as well? And it's just grown rapidly and then I, you know, from there, it's like a lot of the time I didn't even know who my mailing list was then going on and on and on to. So it's funny when you would be talking to someone that goes, oh, yeah, I get your mailing list and you think, how do you get that? So... Yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, it's important to remember that email is still um, one way that, you know, people contact each other and we talk about social media, but email is how you're getting to journalists and stuff like that. Yep. Um, do you ever have problems with stuff being misquoted or misused, like stuff that you post in social media by journalists or anything like that? Not too much. I haven't had that problem and especially too with my race reports, if I write it and it's my text and my words, then you know, it's, it's getting out there and they can't really change it. Um, also as well, when I get interviewed, I tend to like it getting emailed to me rather than doing it over the phone. So if it's emailed to me and I can type it out and that's how it's gonna end up, then generally it doesn't get misquoted. Yeah, I mean, you, you do do a lot yourself and I think that's very important. I mean, if perhaps athletes, other athletes might think, oh, I'm not a very good writer or something like that. I mean, that's yeah. what I think well, my uh, about myself. My spelling shocking, but spell check on the computer, so... Yeah. Exactly. Like, I mean, <laughs> would, what would your advice be? Just get out there and do it? Yeah, I think it's important to be on top of it for sure. And um, the biggest thing is me is once I was able to become sort of self-sufficient in a lot of areas and once I taught myself Photoshop, that opened up so many avenues to just, you know, being able to put logos on things or do my race report or design my own posters. And in the end, it saves a lot of money.